Chairman Sanders, Ranking Member Cassidy, and distinguished members of the committee, thank you for inviting me today. We are grateful that the committee has finally turned its attention to education. America faces a lost generation of students who were negatively impacted by decisions made during the pandemic. NAEP scores have shown the proficiency levels in core subjects fell precipitously due to school closures. So today's hearing is a bit of a mystery because the issues the parents care about are not the ones that are being discussed today. Families worry about the quality of their children's education. 2023 NAEP scores dropped across the country at all grade levels. In Vermont, eighth grade math proficiency dropped 11 points down to 27%. In Pennsylvania, it dropped 12 points to 27%. And in Oklahoma, it dropped 10 points. Only 16% of children are proficient in math. But that's not all. In students in America, they cannot read. In Virginia, only 32% of fourth graders are proficient in reading. In Minnesota, only 30% of eighth graders are. And in New Mexico, only 18% of eighth graders are. Yet districts are eliminating advanced classes in the name of equity, claiming that gifted and talented programs are racist if enrollment doesn't mirror community demographics. In schools where AP classes have been eliminated, parents have watched their children regress to the level of their least able classmate. Brilliant students are discouraged from getting too far ahead because inequity perpetuates systemic racism. Hard work, objectivity, and self-reliance are traits that made the American economy the envy of the world. Yet now those characteristics are derided as white supremacy. Kids are in school for approximately seven hours each day, but instead of using that time to address learning loss, it's spent on identity politics. In Lawrence, Kansas, elementary school students marched to celebrate Black Lives Matter at school week, at a school where only 32% of children are proficient in math. In Appleton, Wisconsin, teachers were given resources recommending that students do privilege walks in a district where only 38% of middle schoolers are proficient in reading and math. America's education system is failing the very students it was designed to serve. Trust between parents and districts has shattered. For decades, public schools have operated in loco parentis, and administrators worked with families in the best interest of students. Pandemic era closures fractured this bond. It's hard to say that districts prioritize learning when groups like the Chicago's Teachers Union asserted that the push to reopen schools was rooted in racism, sexism, and misogyny, and the head of the LA Teachers Union said, there is no such thing as learning loss. Our kids didn't lose anything. It's okay that our babies may not have learned their timetables. They learned resilience. They know the words insurrection and coup. But there has been a shift away from partnering with families to working against families. Consider parental exclusion policies, which explicitly state that parents don't have the right to know their child's gender identity at school. PDE has identified nearly 1,100 districts around the country with these policies, impacting over 11.4 million children. Although framed as a safety issue, school officials are already mandatory reporters. If an employee thinks at a school that a student is in danger, they are legally obligated to file a report. America spends billions of dollars on mental health. Perhaps teachers shouldn't tell children that mommy and daddy won't love them if they change genders and that the solution is to lead a double life. Another area of concern is school safety. CDC data shows a rise in drug overdose deaths among adolescents between 2019 and 2021, while another report suggests that 20 to 30 non-fatal overdoses occur for every death. In Massachusetts, one student's kill list was swept under the rug by the superintendent who called for empathy for the creator of the list while creating an LGBTQIA plus affinity group and anti-bias training for the district. Frequently, parents find out about school-based incidents via social media or local news, not from the schools themselves. And following October 7th, Jew hatred has swept across K-12 schools just like on college campuses, yet lesson plans about blood libel and swastikas on mirror go ignored. This unequal adjudication of civil rights law threatens to undermine not only faith in our education system, but the rule of law writ large. Schools don't have a resource issue. They have an allocation issue. There's a saying, don't tell me where your priorities are. Show me where you spend your money, and I'll tell you what they are. Education leaders routinely choose to spend money on programs and personnel that don't directly benefit students. Like Glassbrook Elementary in California, where only 15% of students are proficient in math, which spent $250,000 on woke kindergarten. Federal data shows that between 2000 and 2019, the student population grew 7.9% and the teacher population grew 8.7%, yet administrators grew 87.6%. Why? DEI. The Heritage Foundation documented the growth of chief diversity officer positions in K-12 districts, finding that standardized test results show that achievement gaps are growing wider over time in districts with CDOs. Maybe it's not the lack of money that's the problem, but instead how the money is being spent. We want our children to stay in classrooms to learn how to read and write, not march for climate change. We want our children to know how to get the right answer in math class, not be told that showing their work is white supremacy. We want our children to be safe when we drop them off, and we don't want teachers to tell them to keep secrets from mom and dad. Fixing the American education system is hard, which is why it is essential to identify and grapple with the real problems and not pre-election sloganeering. Thank you.